Okay, hello Johanna and welcome to Finland. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, especially Tilhamingju met Ahmalit. What's that? Tilhamingju oh, met Ahmalit. Oh, thank you. Ahmalit, thank you very much. Thank you. That was my poor Icelandic. Yeah, but it's it's good. I can understand, so. Today is your birthday. Yeah. And I have a gift for you. You do? Yes, I have. Here you go. Please show it to the camera. It's Finnish salty licorice. <laughs> wow, okay. It says in the this package nice. that it's especially good for the singers. Ooh, okay, that's nice. I actually use some of these uh, mm -hmm. in Iceland, first, but that's like an international thing. So thank you. That's very Finnish. nice. <laughs> that's very nice of you. And maybe that gives you some extra boost for tonight. Yes, definitely. I was actually feeling kind of tired in the throat, so this could very much help me. <laughs> oh, this was Thank the perfect you. gift. Yeah. Here you go. Thank you. So tonight you will be performing. Yes. In the International Horse, horse show. show. Yes. And I heard that you also yourself ride a horse. Yeah. Is this true? Yes, yes. <laughs> Do you still ride a horse? <clears throat> yeah, I have four horses actually uh, in Iceland. And uh, I've been riding since I was very, very young. Mm -hmm. So this is, I'm used to this. <laughs> Why do you like horse riding? Um, because, I mean, I love being out in the nature and this is just the connection with the horse. And it's just a very, very fun thing to do. And it's also fun when you're with a lot of people. And, and it's, it's a very social sport. And uh, there's a lot of people in Iceland actually who... who do horseback riding and own horses and stables and stuff like this. So it's very normal and common in Iceland to have horses. You said you have four horses. Yeah. Are they your, your own horses? Yes, me and my family have them together. What are the names of the horses? Oh, <clears throat> well, there's Gerpir, that's my, that's my horse. And then there's Leire, that's, my, that's the horse that I ride and my father usually rides. And then we have uh, Soltis and Glotis. Um, how is the Sketpir like? Get how is the first Ketpir, one. Ketpir. Well, he is the, he is the he is the you know the tough guy of the group. He's my mm -hmm. horse. I bought him when I was uh, when I was what eight no nine years old nine ten years old and uh, <clears throat> he's he's a black horse with very long you know mane and so he's he's beautiful. He's so nice. What kind of character? He he's have? like, uh, he's he's a tough guy. Not everyone can ride him. He kind of like uh, takes out when you when you when you start when you get on him and and you then he kind of you know tries to feel like okay what kind of person is this? Can I really get away with a lot of things with this person? Can I run away and stuff like this? He's he's you know he's a bad boy, <laughs> but he's fun. He's very fun. Do you like bad boys? Yes, I mean at least my horse. <laughs> good, good. Uh, let's talk about some music. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Your album is also released here in Finland. Mm -hmm. It's called Butterflies and Elvis. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there is a song that carries the same name. And it's about, uh, it's, it's about singing to a guy who loves Butterflies and Elvis and yes. eats, Very good. <laughs> eats pancakes for breakfast or how was it? French fries. French fries for French. breakfast. Yes. If you had to describe yourself in that same kind of manner, yes. how would you describe yourself? Oh God, I, I'm boring to describe. <laughs> I'm the kind of person who, who goes to bed early, I wake up early and go to the gym and eat healthy and you know, so I don't know. I'm not like the kind of uh, personality that you would like to describe in a song, I think. <laughs> well, what kind of small things in life you like? Mm, well, music is the most important thing in my life and uh, my family, my dogs and my horses and just having fun and uh, that's the most important thing in life i think then let's come back in time until the may in spring mm -hmm. you took part in the eurovision song contest yes how was it it was amazing <laughs> what can i say uh, i was very lucky to be participating this year as well because i mean it was the, it was so glamorous. Everything was so big, and everything was so professional and well done. So I, I'm so fortunate, and it's it's helped me a lot in my career. You became second. Was it disappointing not to win, or were you satisfied with that result? Not, not at all, because I mean Iceland usually doesn't even reach the finals. So this was just, I mean, my main goal for the whole competition was just reaching the finals. And then when I did, then I was like, okay, maybe maybe top ten. 
that's that would be beautiful but in the second place i never imagined so i was so satisfied what did you do in the back room when the results came well we just it kind of it kind of didn't come to me in the first place when when they were announcing like okay so you're in the second place i was like okay cool but then you know a few weeks later then it comes to you like okay wow i really was second you know that's when it really hits you the reality of it how did iceland take you back uh, <clears throat> that, that that part was amazing because um when me and the whole team came back from from Russia to the Icelandic airport, there was a lot of people there, and you know the journalists and the TV and the news and a lot of people just coming together there, and they were cheering for us and so happy. And I've I've gotten so much good responses from Iceland. They're so. I think it's also because of the crisis in Iceland. Because I mean, I think I mean of course there's a world crisis, but. Iceland is having it pretty bad. So this is this was the first good news that they've had in a long time. So they were so grateful for there was something good. What do you think it would mean to Iceland if Iceland won the Eurovision Song Contest? Um, I think it would be great because we have never won before and everyone would be very happy about that. But then there's a downside to it because we don't have the money to have it. So we would have to ask some other country to host the competition. Iceland is the target for many kinds of stories and legends. Mm -hmm. You probably have heard of them. Mm -hmm. Which like of the Vikings and, and you mean that kind of? And well, yeah. people think it's 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 a mysterious land. Yeah, it you is. Know? When you, I actually notice it more when I'm coming from abroad when I've been somewhere, and then I come and drive from the airport, and I'm like, yeah, wow, this is really kind of a mystic because everything is like the the lava everywhere and the. The you know it's dark kind of everything is very mysterious. Does it feel like entering a fairy tale? Yeah, actually it does. When when you've been away for a long time, but then when you live there, you kind of stop noticing it. But then when yeah, when I come back after being away for a long time, then I, then it hits me really really hard. Is there some stories about Iceland that you think are not too, are not true? Well, some people think we live in snow houses. <laughs> That's definitely not true. When I was in the U.S., that was very funny because uh, many people asked me, like, wow, you have TVs in Iceland? And I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> and cars? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's uh, not true <laughs> at all. Mm -hmm. So there are no elves in Iceland. Well, some people actually believe so. Well, some people that are psychic or something like that, they, they, they believe that they... And there are a lot of uh, fairy tales about them living in the, you know, the big rocks that a lot of elves live in there. And there are actually tales of, of like beautiful elvish women taking men inside the, the rocks and then they never come out again. Mm -hmm. But who knows? I haven't you, seen one. I haven't, haven't seen, seen one. one. <laughs> Do you believe in them? Well, I would like to, but uh, but uh, I haven't seen one, so maybe maybe when I see them, I will. 